Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Hey guys, Rosie here. I just want to say I am so grateful that you're listening. We are just getting a massive amount of response on this podcast, and I am so grateful that you're a part of this radically loved community, that you're enjoying the content and that you're enjoying all the guests and that you're still here and you're still working on yourself and your journey and your path. And I pray that you've received some tools listening to the guests or listening to any of my ideas or topics on meditation or yoga and how these tools can help you create a life of purpose to continue to help us give you the best content, you can subscribe to this podcast. And most of the time you can just do it from your phone, from iTunes, click subscribe and write a review. This really helps us continue this path and this journey. And we love doing it so much. And again, I'm so grateful that you're here. Let us know what you thought. Thanks for listening. We're just sitting having some tea Yes. here in my living room, and um, it's girl time today, and you guys get to be involved, so welcome. I wish I had a little, like, track, a little, like, <laughs> clapping track. Anyway, uh, I know, I want to, I know, <laughs> I want to do it too. Uh, I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. Because I love you, and you're amazing, and I think that what you're doing in the world is going to help already helping so many people and I got to see it being born so (laughs) I'm just I'm so excited to just share your story with our audience and to just give them a little bit of insight as to who you are and what you're doing um, aside from obviously taking over the world Um, (laughs) I appreciate you having me I love you great uh, so for the people listening, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and everything that you like <laughs> and love, aside from tea at Rosie's house. This tea is amazing. <laughs> um, so I'm a physical therapist here in LA, um, but I'm actually, you know, been stepping away from treating clients in person, and now I'm moving more to helping others in ways that I don't even have to be there, which is getting people to tune into their own bodies and feel, yeah. you know, what movement feels like within them without having to go to someone like me or before or during or whatever, yeah. but just getting people to tune in. And that's what I think is so powerful because it's like when we really acknowledge that we have the responsibility within our own selves to prevent a lot of pain and injury. It's sometimes a hard pill to swallow. Uh-huh, yes. <laughs> but, um, but knowing that you know someone can help and they can facilitate, that's what I do as a physical therapist, but I'm not fixing anyone. And mm. I don't like to use that language where it's like, in, even if someone's like, oh my God, you have magic hands and you, you, you heal me every time. I'm like, no, hun, like, you're, you're doing it. I'm just yeah. facilitating. <gasps> I love, and she's humble, you guys. <laughs> Seriously, I can't even with her right now. So what, how, how did you even get into this field? Like, what, what inspired you to become uh, a physical, a doctor of physical therapy? Let's get this straight, my friends. So what inspired, what, how, like, how, did you grow up always wanting to, to do this, to move your body? Like, what, what happened? Well, I grew up forced to move my body, (laughs) which sounds really bad, but I'm super incredibly (laughs) grateful for it. So we grew up like we had to be in a sport growing up from from grade school through high school. Like if you didn't go on to college and continue, that was okay, but you needed to be in a sport. And I mean, I appreciate my parents so much for 
instilling that because it just, you learned so much discipline. I mean, and then I, I tried everything under the sun before I stumbled across gymnastics and decided, okay, I might not be that bad at it because soccer, well, first of all, soccer, I was with, I was like five and it was co-ed and I didn't want to play with the boys. So that was my issue. (laughs) (laughs) I would literally like stay on the sidelines and cry and refuse to go into the games because boys had cooties. Oh my goodness, (laughs) Jen. (laughs) <laughs> so that didn't work out so well. And then I tried, I tried dance and eh, and then I tried, I tried softball and I just remember like running and I would like hold on to my helmet and my dad would be like, let go of your helmet. <laughs> like, but it's going to fall off. <laughs> so I was just, you know, continuously terrible until I stumbled upon gymnastics Okay. and found something I really loved and didn't want to miss school over and didn't want to, like, it was just because if I, if I was too sick for school, then I couldn't go to gymnastics, you know, so I powered through and I realized that gymnastics was just my thing. And so I did that for nine years Wow. from like, yeah, for like nine years. So it was a while and, um, but I quit in high school and went on to track and other things, um, And then when I was going into college, I knew that I loved the body. I did just love movement. And I remember my mom like sneaking me into the gym and getting me into a Pilates class and I loved it. And the movement and the holds and everything, it reminded me of gymnastics conditioning. And I was like, oh, this is familiar. Like I could work out, I could do fitness (laughs) because it reminded me of gymnastics conditioning and what it felt like to have those long, hard holds and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I started coaching gymnastics, went into kinesiology and in undergrad because I knew I loved movement and I loved human movement and wanted to learn more. I loved anatomy and fizz and like just nerding out like that. Um, and so I, continue to, you know, go down the path, but I didn't necessarily know that physical therapy was exactly where I was going to end up. Okay. I just knew physical movement in some kind of way was what I loved. But the more I coached, it was like I would tape an ankle and I'd be like, but why am I taping an ankle? And then, you know, I, and I started actually teaching Pilates as well. And then I was like, okay, I'm modifying movement based on pain, but like, I want to know why they're in pain and more. And it's just like, the more I wanted to learn, it was like no brainer that physical therapy was where I was going to go. And it just so happens that you have to get your doctorate. And I'm not a school person, but I was like, you know, this is just what you got to do. Oh, a hundred thousand dollars in loans. That's okay. This is just what you got to do. And it was just became like, I know it's a little disgusting, oh, but it just became like, this is like, it was just a no brainer. Even yeah. if it took me, which it didn't, I got in the first time I applied, but I've had friends who applied three times before they got in. And I knew that that would be my thing as well. No matter how many times I had to apply, like this was going to be my path. Yeah. And I think once you decide this is it, you do whatever it takes to get there. It doesn't really matter what obstacle is in the way. It doesn't become an obstacle when you know that this is just the path. Yeah. And so that's what I knew. So I was in school for like nine years <laughs> in, uh, from undergrad to finishing up prereqs to going through grad school. Um, and while I was in grad school, started posting on social media. A calisthenic page started reposting me because they became friends. And... Um, that started to grow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then now it's become my educational platform. Yeah. I'm like, that's the Cliff's notes of it. Yeah, that, like, is. that is. It's that like is. This. That is incredible. I mean, the fact that you were able to not only do schooling, I, I'm always so inspired by anyone who goes to college for that long. It's like, I've gone to college for that long and I'm like not a doctor. I'm just like barely a BA, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it like took me like 10 years to get there, you know, because I just was only going to school part time, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But I mean, regardless, if I had, I mean, I just, I don't know that I could do it. You know what I mean? There's just certain things that I, I think are, are, you know, the, those types of fields that need that much schooling, you know? So, yes. and so what happened after you, you finished school? Like what, what did you want to, what was your dream? Um, so at the time when I got into physical therapy school, yeah. I was coaching or I was, um, 
teaching Pilates. Okay. And so I was like, oh, I'll be a Pilates rehab instructor, and which means that you're doing, you know, Pilates work, but for rehabilitation, really slow on a reformer or a Cadillac, just, you know, nitty pitty going through things. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, well, it's probably going to attract more women. So I'll go into women's health, which is very internal. And, um, <laughs> and so in PT school, in our first year, we had a two week, our first like introduction to going out and, um, following a PT. And I followed a women's health therapist and I was like, oh, maybe this is not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean internal, like. Physically internal, like not a like, gyno, I'm like yeah, like a oh, gynecologist internal. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, it's there's muscles. You you know, just the way you rub a back, and you get spasms in your back. Yeah, people get spasms in, in other places, or regime. don't know how to contract. Yeah, you know, certain muscles, and it's it's a huge problem. It's a huge thing that I think people don't aren't aware of enough yeah. and are embarrassed to admit. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of MDs don't even know that there's pelvic floor therapists because ma it's not just a woman's health thing. It's a pelvic floor thing because males have them as well. And so understanding like, guys, if you're listening to this, you know, and you yeah. have like, it's not normal to just like have a kid and be peeing if you're going to run or jumping around. Not normal. There is a fix mm. for it. Um, it's not normal to have pain during intercourse. It's not normal, you know, like all yeah, these yeah. things that you just, you're, you get embarrassed about to sure. talk about. There's people out there that can actually help. Anyways, I realized that was not my route. Yeah, <laughs> you realize that that's not what you, you realize that's the way you didn't, you didn't necessarily want to help in that. Yeah, way. in Got that it. way. I Got love it. to like talk about it and inform people and like externally sure, talk about it. Sure. But I realized, um. I gotta be honest, I think I almost passed out from the smell. Oh, isn't that so sad? <laughs> oh, Jen. Well, look, some people, you know, that's, that's bless them for. No, seriously. That it's being so their needed. Work. Yes, it's so definitely needed. Um, I'm just probably not gonna be the person who's going sure. to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I thought, you know, for sure I was gonna be working for someone else, I was never gonna work for myself. Um, and that was going to be my path. Hmm. I, I was like, I always said business, pff, that's over my head. Really? Oh, yeah. Huh. Never would I imagine I would be an entrepreneur. I would be doing my own thing. I, I was just, that was so not in my mindset at all. Really? Yes. Interesting. Not even a little bit. Like, I got to tell you, wow. not at all. Um, but that also goes into the self-worth and, you know, all that sure, kind of talk sure. of yeah. not feeling like I can. Yeah. And that I'm worth you know, having that. Yeah. Um, and then I met Lewis and something started to shift. <laughs> I would imagine. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, I was in my third year of PT school and he was getting worked on by a chiropractor and she was at his house and had her own equipment and had her own table. And I was like, and when I saw her doing a session on him, it was like all physical therapy work, quote unquote mm -hmm. physical therapy, sure. where she was doing soft tissue. She wasn't doing like hard adjustments or, you know, and then she'd do movement stuff and breath work to end. And I was like, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just like doing it on your own, not working under an MD and, or yeah. a clinic. And, and so I would, you know, I began to ask her more questions. And the more that I asked her, I was like, wow, this is like, and I even asked my school. We had a quote-unquote business class for a quarter, which was, like, awful. A class for a quarter. <clears throat> yeah. One quarter of, like, business of, like, how to scare you out of never wanting to own your own practice because it'd be way too much work. It's basically what the message was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I even asked. I was like, you know, <clears throat> now that we have direct access and we don't have to go through an MD for a prescription, right. can't we like be treating on our own? Like I met this chiropractor, yeah. this is what she does. Yeah. And they said, no, that would never work. I was like, whoa. And like, I like wanted to like slap her. I was like, seriously, you just told 60 something people that this would never work. That's crazy. So it was, I mean, that's just old school mindset is like, yeah. no, we follow the doctor's prescription. Sure. We go through insurance. We, you know, and unfortunately that is what a lot of people think of physical therapy as well. You know, you throw out your back, you're like, oh, I got to go call my Cairo, which is not bad. 
Sure. But why isn't it that I got to think of my physical therapist who can yeah. get me back to movement, find the cause of what really happened? And granted, Kairos can as well, but if you go to the typical one that's just doing adjustment and gone, yeah, you're going to release endorphins, going to feel good after yeah. a while, but get to the cause, which is what a lot of physical therapy should be about and what a lot of respectable Kairos that I know do. But when you go back to old school mindset of things, it's like that was really not heard of. Hmm. But the more that I started to learn about it and see other people doing it, um, I did graduate and I went to a, a typical physical therapy clinic. And um, the more, I mean, granted, my social media started to grow. Yes. And the more that I educated online, I realized that people actually wanted to reach out to me personally. I realized people were coming in to my clinic and paying cash to see me, which I don't see that money. I'm being paid on like a set amount, you know? Sure. And um, so I'm like, gosh, like if this is what people are really doing just to reach out and to see me, what could I do on my own? And the more opportunities I got, like I would, I would have to pass things up because I'm working at this nine to five where I can't just take off whenever I wanted to. Yeah. So I realized I can always come back. It's a great thing about having a career. I can always That's find true. a job, yeah. you know? But this, I'm not always going to be able to take the sleep and go off on my own. So now's the time. So I literally decided on like a day. It was like a Saturday. We, Louis and I were somewhere and we were like walking around. I was like, I think I'm done. Oh. And, and he was like, okay. I was like, yeah. I was like, email your, your boss right now. I was like, all right. And so like I emailed right away. Oh. And I got like a text back and he was like, don't leave us. And like, so they knew, you know, yeah, they knew yeah, that they this, knew. this time was coming. Yeah. I wasn't going to be there forever. Um, and I took the leap and I started working for myself and getting all the clients. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was amazing and it went really well. But then I realized, you know, I have an opportunity also online where I can touch more people. If yeah. I do have this social platform and I do have reach to where I could touch people that not only are coming in to see me, but who could possibly help themselves, why am I not helping more? Yeah. And yes, it's great to like see a video that I post on Instagram and be like, oh, that's cool and I'm gonna save that. But then you have to like scroll back through and find out, you know, it's like, so having a place where people could just go and find something, yeah. it's all in order, it's all like, beautifully written, written out details, everything, and just have that in a space for them. That's way cheaper than coming to see me Yeah. or another therapist, you know, why not? So that's what I created. Yeah. Well, and I think that part of what I, not part of what I love, I mean, I, I love everything that you do, but I think that you're really addressing things at the root. And I think that that's what people aren't talking about. It's like yeah. people seek things out like, chiropractors or PTs or uh, yoga s stretches or different <laughs> things when they don't feel well. Right. It's like only when I don't feel well. Exactly. But it's like, but why don't, why don't, why can't you move or why are you injured? Is it yes. because of lack of an activity or you're doing, I mean, I, you're always talking about how people, even at the gym, they do things wrong, mm -hmm. you know, or like they're not, they don't have the proper alignment. And, mm -hmm. and I think that it's so important and, and people don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously you saw this all the time. You saw people coming in and were getting injured. How do you think that with what you're doing, you can help improve people's, uh, uh, not only obviously lives in, in general, but like the health of their, their physical mobility? Mm -hmm. Um, well, the reason I did stick to like mobility as well when I was creating this, because you can go down a long rabbit hole of exercises. Sure. You know, there's so many exercises that are going to help everyone. But when it really comes down to it, like when I see someone first, I'm getting you back to being able to breathe in your body again. And I'm getting you back to where your restrictions are. Because it's just like when a baby grows and develops, they are able to put their foot in their mouth before they're able to crawl or walk. So it's why are we not getting back to these basic progressions of yeah. what we need and we're just going to add, I mean, you can add strength on top of, on top of something, sure. And not everybody is going to be as mobile as the next or whatever, but if you can start to tap into these restrictions that you may not have even known 
are there, that's what's so super powerful, you know? And, and, you know, the reason why my Instagram started to grow in the first place, it's like I would post a video next to an anatomy photo and the anatomy photo my usually fave. indicated <laughs> where the pain would be. Sure. And that's what attracted people because people always think, oh, that's my painful area. So I need to know what, what to do for that area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the fact and the reality is it's usually where you think it is, it ain't. And that's a quote from like, uh, gosh, I can't remember her name right now, but she, Ida, Ida Ralph, Rolf? Oh, from the, Ra the Rolf Rolfing. method. Thing. Yeah, yes. from Rolfing, Where yes. you think it is, it ain't. It ain't, yeah. Because it's, and it's so very true. Yes, your pain area is there. And you can address pain. You can put Band-Aids mm -hmm. on it. You can address the symptoms, which is, unfortunately a lot of PT and chiro clinics do. They address oh. the symptom. Yeah. And that's just your pain. Well, it's just like doctors too. Right, anyway. exactly. Yeah. But are we really getting down to the cause? What caused that so that it's not going to come back again? Yeah. And that could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be a mobility issue. It could be a stability issue. It could be a motor control issue. I mean, it could be a million things. Can but it be an emotional issue? Totally emotional issue. I mean, when I, when I actually started to work on my own as well is where it was most powerful because now instead of having 15 to 30 minutes with a client, I had an hour or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And the way that I created space for people, I would have people crying on my table at least once a week. And that's not because I'm digging in and hurting them, <laughs> but it's really because I'm just creating the space for them to yeah. open up and, and see where real stressors or emotional blocks can be. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you, when people actually release, oh, magically pain goes away. Or when I finally get someone to tap back in and be able to breathe, pain yeah. goes away. And they're like, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even touching you. Like, so, and that's... Also, what I think is missing out of these these clinical mills where they're just like, you, yeah, you can, the fact and reality is like, there's so many ways to help people and your body's really good at taking care of itself. Mm -hmm. So almost no matter what exercise you're going to get, your pain's going to go away eventually. Like I guarantee it. And people with chronic pain, you usually do need to go and talk to someone because it is more emotional and mindset driven mm -hmm. than it's going to be anything to do with movement. Yeah. Um, as much as I'm a movement person, I say it starts with the mind, then it goes into what are you putting in your body, and then it goes to movement, unfortunately. Yeah. Because the mind is everything. Yes. It's literally the more stressed out we are, the more cortisol levels mm -hmm. are going to shoot throughout the body, the more you're going to feel pain, the more you're going to drive into your sympathetic system, which is your like fight and flight, and you're just going to be driving into the system all the time. And if you're not able to tap into that parasympathetic of the rest and relaxation, you're not able to breathe into your diaphragm, you're like, you know, it's like then you're you're going to be in chronic pain yeah. or pain things are going to come back all the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's also a normal thing. Like our bodies, it's okay to have pain once in a while. Like don't judge yourself. It's sure, you know, and we all are human. We're going to come into stressful situations, but being able to acknowledge and know where it's coming from and how to like work with yourself in order to get back out of it. Like I'm such a freaking nerd. So when I got in a car accident last year, my right shoulder blade, started to hurt like immediately when I got in the car accident. And this goes on anytime I'm in a stressful like situation. And so I was like, ah, oh, it's back. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I loved it because yeah. it only, you know, validated what I'm telling people. Yes. And so I'm being able to experience that myself. I love. Yeah. I do. I do these things. I continue to move. I move into, you know, because I believe in what sure, I'm saying. Sure. Yes. And I think you should be. You should. Yeah. You know, and I think you're promoting. You should be moving into. Of course. So, so it was just. I'm such a nerd, but it was just such a cool thing to, <laughs> to be able to like feel and experience. Yeah, because it's like you're 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 able to have a a, a tactile experience of mm -hmm. the things that you're. You know, you, there's a result there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I think that for a lot of people, I know that for me, it's the same thing. I have certain parts in my body that when I'm stressed out, mm -hmm. they start to ache. Mm -hmm. And I start to have issues, my right shoulder, you know, I get, or I, uh, get a neck kink mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, that's so strange. Nothing's changed. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know what it is. I'm stressed out or yeah. I'm overwhelmed right now, you right. know? So 
I think it's it's very uh, key to to understand that your body speaks to you. Totally. And your body's always going to show you. It is. And I think that thinking about the formula and the way of mind, what you're putting into it, and then movement is really key because you're then tr treating it at the root. Yeah, exactly. Because people don't realize how powerful food is as well. And mind you, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian, so I'm not speaking into it. But at the same time, it doesn't take, you know, it's kind of common sense. Like at least cut out the things that you, we know for a fact are inflammatory, yeah. which is going to be your sugar, gluten, and dairy. Of course. Those are like the top things. Other than that, you're probably going to have little things here and there that you, like for me, I know when I eat grains and legumes, I'm like, I'm bloated. I don't feel well. And I just like, it's not a good story for me. <laughs> But that's my body. Other people, I talked to some, someone the other day, and they were like, when I cut out eggs, I felt amazing. And they used to have eggs every single morning. <gasps> so, you know, it just, it, but you can't say across you can't the board say it, yeah, you that can't. that's going to work for everyone. No. I mean, even as, and I can say this because I'm a certified nutritionist and a health coach, but everything that she said is absolutely right. And uh, here's what I learned in nutrition school. Uh, sugar is not great for you. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are gluten intolerant mm -hmm. and one person's food is another person's poison. Yeah. So, I mean, you really have to be your own best detective. Totally. There's not one way for everyone. Mm -mm. And that's why I created the program as well. Yeah. You know, it pissed some people off because they're like, no, like seriously, it's like, because I'm, I'm I will not cut them <laughs> because it's not like day one, you do this day two, you do this. Oh. It doesn't go through exact flows of how you need to move for your body because you need to find out what's restricted within your own body. Yeah. Like you can literally have the same diagnosis and have a different cause than someone else. And it takes you really tuning in and feeling what's restricted to yeah. know what you need to move into, what you need to add into your daily routine, what you yeah. need to, you know, maybe you put this one at work. Maybe you do this one when you first wake up. And the beautiful thing is like being able to decide for yourself when you put that in and have a toolbox that you can always refer back to. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's funny when people don't see it that way and that's fine. Well, I think that the other thing too, Jen, is like people want... To be told exactly yes. what to do. And yes. I think that I, I used to be that way. I, I used to like things to be structured in that way. But what I've learned about myself, and maybe you can relate, is that I can do that for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But for sustainability, it never works. Mm -hmm. Because things happen, you fall off a routine, and then it just all goes out the window. Totally. Where instead of having something that is more... I feel like things like that are more curated to your own individual mm -hmm. uh, self-discipline or knowledge mm -hmm. to know, oh, I can do this workout or this video for this day and mm -hmm. it's okay if I do this for the other because mm -hmm. of X, Y, Z. This is how I'm feeling at yes. the moment. Yes, totally. That requires a lot of self-discipline and it requires a yes. lot of self-inquiry. Uh, it does. Which is hard for some people. It, it is, unfortunately. But, you know, and, I, and, and that's okay. If someone doesn't want to do it for that reason, I'm really, I'm okay with it. You know, it's just, it's where you're at in life as well. And not everyone's going to see value in something where they just have like a layout of like, here's your shoulder module, here's your hip module. Sure, sure. You know, but yeah. for me, it was like, I can't lay it out any more clearly. I explained everything as clear as I could. So you take it and you move through it as you see as you see fit for your body, yeah. and that's it. And um, and it's been super powerful for some people. Like yeah. someone said, they were going to the Cairo for eight months, and then they did the program two weeks later. They're out of pain. So when someone really dives in and starts to do it, yeah, beautiful things can open oh. up. Beautiful things. Well, I think, and, you're, and especially you, you get to see this, and people are giving you tons of feedback. I love it when you post, like people, like yeah. talking about their experiences. I, I love to see that. What have you seen uh, has been the biggest downfall for people when it comes to starting something? Hmm, I, I think that's a little too broad because you can like go into a whole deep, deep deep place with that 
what have you seen has been the biggest obstacle for someone who's in a lot of pain and uh, wants to fix it, but there's so what there's something missing? Yeah. Well, I think any of us, I mean, especially I grew up obviously an athlete. So like when pain happens, yeah. there is a feeling of like hopelessness that comes over you of like, oh my God, is this my life? Like I can't move right now. Is this yeah. what life is going to be like? And so it is, it is such an emotional thing mm -hmm. when you get into this state of pain yeah. and I can appreciate that. Like I get it and I get, you know, but it's also okay. I think we have to learn how to have acceptance and and compassion for ourselves because when you can find compassion for like okay maybe right now i can't run as far yeah. or i can't do this but i can appreciate what i still do have yeah and then from there i can start to move into things mm -hmm. and and i think that's where it really comes from is needing compassion for yourself because a lot of times too I have women who are like are just like well I'm doing this and I'm doing that and then I have this and like it's all over the place you know and I get that because like I definitely have felt that as well sure. like oh am I doing a million things yeah. at once <laughs> I mean isn't that our culture yep but um being able to say it's okay I am like, I'm going to be okay with myself and, and have compassion for myself and breathe into these things. It like, it really opens up a lot Yeah, I, for what you can then appreciate and then do. Um, and one of the things that I loved about, so I did a free little challenge, easy challenge, introducing mobility throughout the body. It's really not very fancy, but it's a great introduction of it all. But what the most powerful thing is, is I went into stories of like gratitude and appreciation. And like one of the things was like opening up your legs into stretching your adductors and how that, how you can do that. And one of the stories I talked about was this young girl that we met in PT school. She has a juvenile arth or rheumatoid arthritis and she could barely open her legs. Like when she stands like wide, it's like really short. And she told us a story of how she went to a gyno and it was like a sub gyno, so it wasn't her regular person. And he's like, all right, put your legs in the stirrups. And she's like, well, I can't do that. And he like backed away and he's like, well, what are we going to do? And she's like, I don't know. My boyfriend figures it out. <laughs> <laughs> but like the reality is like, this isn't a limitation for her. This is not a restriction. Yes, this is all her body has as far as range of motion, but she runs she does yoga. She, like, when you realize, like, people aren't letting these things that are quote-unquote restriction or limitations hold yeah. them back oh, in any area. Yeah. And when you really dive in and appreciate, I don't, I may have this restriction right now, but I have the ability to improve it. Yeah. Where other people like her, juvenile arthritis, you don't have the ability to improve. Like, literally, this is your range of motion. You can, she's had numerous surgeries, so you can have surgeries to, like, try to yeah. fix it, but... This is literally like what life is for you, unfortunately. Yeah. And so when you realize that you have the ability to change, to adapt, and it might be slow, who cares? And we need to stop comparing. I mean, that's, that's was my next question. It's like, because especially people that maybe are living with a chronic thing, they might see somebody else and they might see movement or they mm -hmm. might be like, oh, I'll never, I'll mm -hmm. never be able to do that back mm -hmm. bend or I'll never be able to run or mm -hmm. to do this. So how, how should we deal with that comparison gremlin? Compassion again. I think it always comes back to compassion and self-love. Like just appreciate what you have already. And say, okay, maybe I, I don't have that back flexibility, but look at what I do have. I do have the strength. I can move. I can bend my back. And maybe it doesn't look like that, but I can still bend it. And I can now work into something that I want to achieve. And having compassion for your, where your body is right now. And knowing that things don't happen overnight. Like, I think we all know that, right? When, when you work for something, it takes time. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we can get lucky and we get this quick break of like something that we're able to get, but that's not reality. Yeah. That's not how life works. It takes time. It takes time to get an education. It takes time to, to lose weight. It takes time to adjust to a new eating pattern. It takes 
time yeah. and being able to be okay with the fact that that is what it is. Like, yeah. and I'm not going to look like everyone. Genetics plays a big role. Like, there's just so many different factors that play into you know, these things. And social media is hard because you look at someone and you're like, I want to look like that. But that's maybe what they were born with. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, you know, these fitness people probably don't even do fitness half as much as someone else may. <laughs> but they look amazing because they're genetically blessed. Yeah. And let them be genetically be- blessed. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have, that's part of their talent and their gift that yeah. they get to share. And that's okay. Have compassion for where your body is and what it's able to do, but just come back into appreciating what it is able to do because you know that there's people out there who can't reach and lift something overhead yeah. or they can't, you know, I mean, oh, I can't remember her name right now who has a uh, bilateral. Yeah. The, is she snowboards? Yes. No legs, but she snowboards. Yeah. Crazy. Um, or like mean, Kyle Maynard. Like yes. Kyle's oh like, my God. He did, he, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro yes. and it's like. He was doing handstands with me. Yeah. Crazy. He's, he's incredible. He's the best. Oh, I love him. But, you know, and again, that's, it's not a limitation. It's not a restriction because yeah. he just does. Because he just does. I think that that's sort of the, the other thing that stands in our way is, is our own limitation mm-hmm. or that you know, comparison is the biggest joy kill. Mm -hmm. The minute that we begin to compare ourselves to someone else or, or, or the way someone else looks or the way somebody else is doing things, I think for some it's inspiring and it can, it can light the fire under your ass to do something or to, to motivate. But for others, it can be a real source of, uh, disappointment. Yeah. You know? So I think, I think everything that you're saying is, is true and if we are able to take the time to appreciate where we are in whatever process we're in is 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 going to be the best. I think that the other thing I want to talk to you about is this going through I, for the people that are listening who have gone through some sort of physical therapy. I I've done it before. I've gone through it. Uh I'm also a big fan of letting things happen uh over time because I'm all about sustainability. Mm-hmm. Uh, although sometimes I'm really impatient with certain things and I'm mm-hmm. sure we all we are. all have our things yes how could we how could we be better at being more patient with thing when it comes to things with our physical body like that be weight loss or it be an injury like what would be your recommendation for that um you know, I think when you start maybe writing it down, it helps a lot because when you can write it down and say, this is what I did, this is what I did today and yesterday and the day before and whatever else. And, and you start to write down specific results that you want to see and, and you compare it from this time to this time. And if you stay consistent and writing it down really helps you stay consistent because if you didn't write it down, then you feel bad and then you, you know, so it's yeah. like it's getting into a habit. Um, but a lot of things are, are creating habits and you have to have a specific vision of really what you want within yourself. So not comparing to someone else or what you want in a body physically, but just what you want to feel, what you want to see within yourself. And so not, again, not necessarily a number on a scale or something like that, but like maybe it is, you know, measuring your waist because that can significantly change without those scale moving. So just setting these measurements and these, this vision of what you want to see and then continuing to do it and write it down every day. I mean, we brush our teeth multiple times a day, floss. Because, and we go to see our dentist at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go see someone who checks on your actual physicality of your body, especially if you're an active person, at least like once every two months. I mean, I have clients who come see me once a month and it's just like a regular checkup because they are active, they do move, they do know that there's going to be things they can't see within their own body. 
and I give them stuff that they can implement into their every day. But I think it's crazy that, I mean, it's important we go have our physicals and we, you know, get our blood work done and we see what's going on on the inside. Sure. But the reality is MDs don't have as much knowledge of the structure of the body and how it plays a role in your musculoskeletal system. So being able to go see a physical therapist or a chiro or whoever you trust in that manner just to see and, and get a checkup and then be able to implement something every day into your life be just like you brush your teeth yeah. every day, knowing yeah. that you're preventing cavities, you're preventing root canals, you're preventing all these other things. Do stuff for your body that you're going to prevent pain, prevent injury, prevent going down this place that you just don't want to be in. Yeah. yeah. So take care of exactly what we have. Appreciate exactly what we have. And when you really dive into the appreciation of what your body does for you every single day, just so that you can get out of bed, we start to appreciate, okay, maybe it's more important than texting someone or, you know, all these other things we have to do yeah. and we have to get into our day. It's like, yeah. well, what about moving? What about getting up and feeling your body, listening to your body, tuning in, getting out of restrictions, preventing pain, just like you prevent a cavity, like... For me, it should be a no-brainer. I get that it's not because we do have to live and sustain and all these other things of things we have to be and who we have to be and all these things we have to live up to, but just moving. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think, yes, thank you. Because oftentimes we spend way more time on thinking about the things we're not getting or mm -hmm. we're not seeing than appreciating where we are and being grateful for the fact that we more often than not are in good health and we have the ability to lift our arm over our head yes. to reach for a glass exactly. or to reach for a cup or yes. to bring one leg off your bed and then the other or mm -hmm. to hit the gas pedal from you know in your vehicle yeah it shouldn't be that when something is taken away or you get an injury or pain, That's then you when, start to yeah. ignore, acknowledge it. Yeah. You know, let's, let's start to appreciate and say it every single day, what our yeah. body does for us. You hear that, everyone? <laughs> it's a practice. What are some daily practices that you have that you want to share with us? Um, I definitely love that. Lewis and I say three things we're grateful for every day. And that could be, and we do it every time before we go to bed, which Tori is and just I do like, the same thing, so I love I'm that. Interrupt, but I yes, love that. It's so good. Yeah. It is really good. And it could be physically, it could be like, I'm so glad that I got an opportunity to work out today. Or, you know, it could be, you know, whatever you're grateful for, but saying three things and bringing yourself back into gratitude is always so key. Um, and then it's really, I, my daily movement, it changes all the time but I make sure that I move every day. And when I don't, I feel it. And not only do I feel it, but I probably come off like it. <laughs> like I'm probably not the nicest person anymore. <laughs> but really, I mean, it's like it becomes... She worked out today, everyone. I did, I did, so I'm good. <laughs> Even though I'm sick, I still move. Um, yeah, just when you start to move, you'll start to feel it. Yeah. When you start to make it a daily, like... And, and I make my bed every day. And that also drives how I'm going to continue on for the rest of my day. Just because you feel accomplished. Like, oh, like I know I'm going to get back into this thing at night and it's going to be messy anyways. But when you feel accomplished in this clean space and like, oh, I did something out of more than I need to, yeah. it just helps to drive the rest of your day. And then when you when you pick up the apple instead of like the brownie or whatever it may be and you start to drive these patterns. Yeah. When you drive better patterns, you're gonna create better results and, yes. and better habits because say you grab the apple, then you're gonna be like, oh, while I'm eating healthy, I should work out. And it just like, it all falls in, or you work out. You don't wanna grab the brownie after. You don't wanna kill what you just did, you know? So it's like, it all drives together. Yeah. Uh, what's What's your favorite uh, treat? Ooh, I have a lot. I mean, as much as I'm talking about like Ooh, grabbing that the apple it. rather than <laughs> rather than the brownie, I definitely I say appreciate yourself and don't be mad if you like, you know, indulge once yeah, in a while. Yeah, indulge. Um, I am such a dark chocolate lover. I love dark chocolate. 
And if I could have just like dark chocolate and red wine. That's it. For a night, then I'm like good. That's your jam. That is my jam. Oh, Although that. I'll eat everything under the sun. So <laughs> <laughs> you do love foodie. You're a foodie. I am. Yeah, foodie. I love food. I yeah. do. This is fun. What have been some of the... Let's let's see here. Where do I want this to go? When when you were young and you were put into sports, you said you had to like it was like a non-negotiable pretty mm-hmm. much. Who whose idea was that? Uh both my parents. Both your parents. Yeah. Are they really are they active? Yeah. Um and I so appreciate that. My mom is like a freak. She she really is like I remember riding my bike while she would run and like she has just always been so active. It was ingrained in her brain at a young age and so she's just like carried it on and it is her mental piece now. But she would like when I was teaching Pilates she'd be like killing people half her age like just showing them up. She's a beast. She's amazing. Um, So so it just like it it just was lifestyle because that was her lifestyle. That is just lifestyle. My dad wasn't as beast about it, but he definitely, he goes to the gym. He, they used to take nightly walks after work. I think he gets home too late now, but they, I remember like every night they would go on a walk together and walk the dogs. Like that was just their thing. So again, like activity was just part of lifestyle. It wasn't something you had to do. It wasn't, it was just the way you lived. Yeah. And so being able to see that, um, just continue to drive where I'm at. And I'm so appreciative of that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. I, uh, I can relate to that. Both my parents, when I was younger, they, they would often go on, on walks and, uh, they would always talk about how important it was. My, my dad still walks to this day. That's I his big that. exercise. Mm-hmm. He's, he was in a, uh, an accident. So he's, he's been injured and he's retired now, but like that's his, he walks, he walks to great. the park, he hangs out with his so friends good. and, and then he walks back and he does a little bit of yoga now, but Aww, like, he just so does cute. it just to say, I think, cause he, he sees how excited I get. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting because in, in, for me growing up in, in a Latin household mm-hmm. in the Latin community, uh, in particular at the, at the, at the time I was growing up, uh, it was, it was not something that was really sort of like a prevalent thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, our us being active was kind of like an afterthought like Mm. my my parents they were or my dad mostly was in like a a volleyball like team like nice with with a couple local friends and they would go and they'd play at at the school and you know on the weekends and stuff and so I I really like loved playing volleyball and that Mm -hmm. was kind of my my thing but then as I got older I didn't like physical movement very much because I was more concerned with being cool Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and physical movement wasn't part of being cool at the time with the people that I was hanging out with. But anyway, um, (laughs) it was interesting just with my family and and in our community, how physical activity wasn't something that was so like, it wasn't important. And I see them now, like even just, I'll take my family, for example, like once I became a, a yoga teacher, I would send my aunt like videos and different things that she could do. But um, I think that for them, it was always sort of like a, an afterthought, you know, um, obviously you grew up in a household where it was, it was important, you mm-hmm. know, it was important to, to have that physical, um, movement. Uh, I, the reason why I bring this up is because we're talking about how we can, begin to implement these types of practices at a young age and in different communities, you know, especially when funding is being cut, you know, and like different things are are not really uh, uh, sort of taught to to kids, especially underprivileged, you know. Well, and I think it's harder to, even with the privilege, it's like now you have your video, like your iPads and your, and all the technology that continues to grow. It's like you're not outside playing as much. That was going to be like, that was going to be like exactly what, it, what I was going to say. Sorry, No, 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 do it. <laughs> um, but that's, I think that that's exactly where I'm going is, is I, I love the fact that I can see, that I can practice at home, that I can mm-hmm. watch one of my mentors videos and mm-hmm. like do a practice and mm-hmm. get inspired to teach something. 
and I could do it right here, like yeah. just from my computer. Like right. I sit there and I do it. But there's something nice about being out and doing it or going to a class or, or going so for a hike. And yeah. I know that you're a big outdoor like hike or you like to like be out and doing things. How can we how can we begin to raise that level of importance to the younger generation that's so used to seeing everything? Like they're watching workout videos on their phone and it's like, are you doing them or are you just watching them? Right, you know, which exactly. Whatevs, but right. I don't know that I really asked you a question, but you know where I'm going. Yeah, I know. Help me out here. You know, I think it starts It starts with everyone. So if we want our kids to be more active, it starts right now with you. Even if you don't have kids right now, do you have nieces and nephews? Do you have, you know, like my nieces and nephews know that I'm like, they're like, I'm going to do handstands with Aunt Jen. You know, like they know that they, I'm a mover. Yeah. And that's what I do. And... And I love that I'm going to be able to inspire in that way and that they're going to see how active I am and yeah. how, you know, my brother like sometimes makes fun of like, I don't need to work out. And I'm like, okay. Uh, but, um, which he's joking because he does it every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> there will come a time. But, but hey, at least like there, he knows that, you know, his daughter and, and son are seeing that they have a crazy Aunt Jen who's like, working out all the time and into fitness and and promoting that and everything and being upside down and <laughs> looking crazy right um but it start it really starts with us right now yeah like why are we waiting for kids you have to set the example I think what's one time we were at like um uh, we were on a family vacation and we were leaving the family vacation and everyone's like packing up and stuff and my niece is like asking my sister, are we going to uh, the workout class now? She literally had, like at two years old, had a, a stroller, that she, a running stroller, so like with the wheels and everything, and she would do squats behind it. Like she just already had this like knowledge and yeah. this mindset of like, this is lifestyle. Oh, yeah. we go to workout class now. Yeah. I love that. And it's just already, she's seeing it a part of a habit, a part of a lifestyle, a part yeah. of like what life is. And I think that's such a beautiful thing that you can give your kids, that this isn't an extra thing. This is, Don't complain about it. Watch your language it's, too. Yeah, it's not a chore. It's not a it's chore. A it's Exactly. And you can do it literally anywhere. And the great yeah. thing about technology is that you could do it anywhere, that's just like right. you were saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like we... Like, drop the excuses. It's okay. We all have them. Own it. Say it. Fill it. Whatever. Let it go. And then say, okay, I'm a little lazy right now. I totally have my days where I'm super lazy. What? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have days where I'm lazy. I'm like, nah, not going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) But you learn how to just, like, accept that and say, like, okay. And then you start moving a little bit. And just start doing a little bit, yeah. a little bit. You you will start to feed into like, oh, maybe I could do a little bit more. Oh, okay, maybe I could. I guess I could do a little bit more. Yeah. Even if it's like literally just doing squats and push-ups, like do something, move your body and your mind and everything will thank you and you'll feel so much better. So once we're able to like, I have the excuses. Let me put that aside for a second and just like try this. Yeah. <laughs> you'll feel just so much better. Yes, thank you. Already just dropping all kinds of wisdom over <laughs> here. Um, so I want to obviously be respectful of your time. I have a couple more questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that I think is important, just uh, aside from everything else that you just talked about and how <laughs> movement is pretty much the root of all our health and how we should be grateful for it. Mm-hmm. What do you think is something that people can do when they're feeling totally defeated and it's the new year and everyone's so motivated the first two weeks and Mm -hmm. like then something happens and then it goes out the window and they get discouraged. So what would you say to that person listening to this right now? I would say, who are you surrounded by right now? Look around at your friends, look around at your family. There's got to be someone, someone who wants to be active, someone who wants to move, whether it's a hike or whatever it may be. Or maybe they've talked about it, but they're not implementing it. 
and you know that you're down on yourself, reach out to that friend and say, hey, can we be accountability partners? Can we go work out? Can we go do, like I, today, I had a conversation, I have an accountability buddy. <laughs> and so every week, um, and this is more for like business and stuff like that, yeah. but every week we, we get on the phone and we talk about our goals. Did we hit them this week? All that kind of stuff. And today she was just feeling a little down and like not, I wasn't being as active. And so I said, okay, well, I have to be in Culver City and she lives in Hermosa, I'm in the Valley. So I said, do you want to meet up and we can we could do the stairs and we can like hike and walk and do all these things. She was like, yes. So being able to have those people that you can reach out to. I totally did that a couple weeks ago too. I texted my friend. I was like, hey, I'm not motivated right now. Can you kick my ass? <laughs> and so having those people like look around, you don't have to do it all your own. And that's yeah. what we need to understand as well. Like you have people there because it's your support system. It literally is. So be don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Yeah. We all have our days where we're going to get down, where something's going to happen. We're not going to feel motivated. No one is motivated 100% of the time. No one. I ain't. No. Heck no. <laughs> so call upon that person that you know can help you, yeah. can motivate you, can inspire you, even if it's just moving a little bit. And, and if you don't have those people, how can you say then, I'm going to be that person? Because then that's motivation for yourself right there. I'm going to be that person because they can be healthier. I want my best friend to move. I want my best friend to live a life long, mm -hmm. just like me, and have longevity and no pain and be able to move and pick up their kids and do all these things. So let's start now. And maybe I can be that source. We're all capable. We all have it within us to be that source. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> All right. So I created this podcast because I wanted just a really good excuse to talk to people that I really liked. Um, <laughs> that's number one. I'm just kidding. Um, because I wanted to create a, a forum for people. You know, it's this, <laughs> this, uh, this radical love tribe that believes that we're loved and supported by our higher power, God, universe, source. Mm -hmm. Uh, baby Buddha, baby Krishna, baby Jesus, whatever it is that y you believe in, mm -hmm. there's that force that binds us together that uh, supports us no matter what. So the last two questions for you are, um, how do you feel that radical love? How do you feel that support? How do you feel radically loved and what or whom do you radically love? Um, myself. <laughs> it always, it has to begin with yourself, you know, is what I believe. And, um, and it comes from myself. It comes from feeling gratitude, feeling appreciation, feeling compassion, feeling love for myself. Because if I can't feel it for myself, how am I taking it out into the world? How am I asking for it from other people if I can't even feel it within myself? And that is how you get it back from other people, is when you're able to show up in this compassion, in this loving, in this human way, in this natural nature of who you are, and not beat yourself up and not come with negativity and not, and you know, when you're not coming off with negativity you're all, and coming off with positivity, people are going to bring that positivity back. It's very rare that you're going to like smile and, and like be nice to someone and they're not going to smile back. You just create a change in that person's life, but it always starts from you. So radically, radically, no matter what, being able to love yourself is everything. I'm like, I just went in right there to that <laughs> vortex with you. Uh, Jen, you're amazing. I have so much gratitude for you. I'm so inspired by what you're doing, by what you're creating and what you're doing in the world. And you're helping and saving so many people's lives and <coughs> teaching people how to move. And I'm just, I'm grateful for people like you that were willing to invest time and money <laughs> into learning your craft and becoming an expert. And we get to reap the benefits. And <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, as a person, I love you and you're the best. <laughs> and you. I'm really grateful for you and to have you on the show and to share your wisdom with the people listening. So thank you. Thank you. For being on. Uh, for the people listening, where can they get more information 
uh, about you and how could they reach you and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, well, my Instagram is where I post everything mm -hmm. and I really do try to get back to all my DMs no matter how long it takes me. <laughs> And you guys, seriously, she's got a following up the wazoo, yeah. so it takes her a long time. It does. Have have compassion for me. <laughs> it's going to take me about three weeks, but I'll get it. Um, uh, yeah, so Instagram at DocGenFit. Um, my Facebook is also DocGenFit. Um, my website is DocGenFit. It's really pretty simple. Pretty simple. I have it everywhere. Um, and then the program is the mobility method. And then there's also another program that is the optimal body that really just takes you through. It's a monthly subscription, super cheap, super available, just taking you through different mobility flows, functional hit workouts and core stability all in one dropping new every month. So yes. And all of those links will be linked up on the show notes. So if you click on the info of this show, you can click directly from your device. Yay. Uh, or your computer, wherever you're listening to this uh, from. Uh, and that's it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You're amazing. Yes, you're amazing. <laughs> you're the best. You guys listening are the best. <laughs> hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us. Message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes. Write a review. We love doing this, so please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.